Welcome to the Haskell Weekly Podcast. This show is about Haskell, a purely functional programming language. I'm your guest, Dustin Seegers. I'm an engineer at IT Pro TV. With me today is your host, Cody Goodman. He is a senior engineer here at IT Pro TV. Thanks for joining me today. No problem, Dustin. I'm glad to be here and talk about some Haskell. So today, I think we are going to talk about Ormolu. Looks like a format Haskell code like never before, stylizing dealio. <laughs> at least that's the uh, tagline at the top. Right. Uh, yeah, I actually Googled uh, Googled that. I was like, how do you pronounce that? It's apparently Ormolu, and it's the uh, 18th oh, nice. century gilding technique for applying finely ground yeah. high carat gold mercury amalgam. Oh, wow. That's, that's a <laughs> mouthful. Yep. Yeah, I had no idea, so I figured I'd probably butcher the name. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for letting me know. Uh, yeah, so the author, Mark Karpov, excuse me if I mispronounced the last name, he's got a pretty good train of thought here. Um, did you happen to see anything interesting, Cody, as you read over this article? Yeah, uh, I think kind of building on the name, Ormalu, uh, mm -hmm. They, they kind of start out talking about the, the principles, uh, which is something you'll find uh, common with Hasklers. And I think that's not just because of uh, some of the kind of academic roots, but also because Haskell's type system is more amenable to uh, allowing you to kind of at a high level state what the principles of your program should be and limit the space of what makes sense. All right, so any of these particular principles that uh, I guess Ormolu is uh, laying out for us? Any of them catch your eye in particular? Yeah, I like how they, they kind of start out by motivating uh, what it's for. You know, what exactly is a code formatter? Mm -hmm. What does it do? Uh, do we want there to be multiple styles? Do we want there to be a single style? Uh, I'm very happy they ended up on a single style because uh, as a programmer, I just want a formatting tool to kind of get out of my way. Yes, I, I can't agree with that. <laughs> now, um, now there are some cases where it uh, it does something that looks a little insane and can affect readability. Uh, I, I see they also address that, though, with uh, a rule of if you make a new line, uh, it will align based on that new line. Uh, now, that allows for some differences, and it kind of goes against the uniformity. So I'm a little worried about the implementation of that, but I, I could see it being a positive. Yeah, also, um, I also see he mentions Hendent and Brittany, uh, both of which we have used here at IT Pro TV. Um, Hendent, I think the lesser of the two. Uh, now, I wasn't here when uh, you guys were using Hendent. How was that? Well, at the time we were using Hindent, I was just a little Haskell novice, which I'm still not much more than that now, but uh, I would say it was nice um, coming from, you know, things like ESLint and stuff like that. Um, it was just nice to have something uh, help us format our code, um, and we were in dire need of it, especially whenever we were, you know, just starting out learning um, Haskell, and we didn't really know... Um, right off the bat, you know, why, uh, how I should format certain things. So it was a good right. kind of like um, entry into uh, formatting Haskell. You know, that that's a good point. I, I, I didn't really think about uh, how that could lower the barrier to entry for Haskell if we had uh, something to automatically format code. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, but I do see that they, they also mentioned Brittany as well, which we still use. Um, I'm enjoying Brittany, although I'm probably the least opinionated whenever it comes to stylizing uh, stuff. <laughs> um, mainly because I just I just like it to look good, and if it looks decent enough, I'm okay with it. Um, but I know that uh, some people are extremely, you know, uh, particular whenever it comes to formatting. Um, what kind of or which of those camps do you fall into? Are you? Um. I, I used to be a little more opinionated, uh, you know, things like uh, align all your, uh, align everything based on uh, 
comma. Well, I guess I still do that. Um, I think your your opinion sums it up pretty good for me. Uh, it just as long as it looks all right, as long as it's not inscrutable, I'm okay with it because uh, I used to only use Emacs alone, and they had this. Oh God, the Haskell mode for that had like three different tab cycling modes. One that was intelligent, one that just <laughs> cycled through them. Yeah. I wasted so much time with that where I could have been, you know, writing code. And that's actually a good uh, a segue into um, other thing that uh, Mark is talking about here with the how code for formatters are also good to take away some of the tedium of writing code in the first place. And now if that, you know, if your formatter is getting in the way of that um, or actually doing the opposite of what he's saying, then, yeah, it's probably, it's probably time to either pick up something new or... Um, yeah, maybe the tool just isn't uh, doing its job uh, correctly. Yeah, I totally agree with taking away the TDM. And it's not, not just because we're lazy, um, but also because we don't want to get knocked out of that flow state. We want to just be able to focus on the problem at hand Correct. and uh, have all those things, you know, ideally have imports taken care of automatically, especially since we use qualified imports, uh, oh, yeah. sort them if you wish. Mm -hmm. uh, that that would be great. All right. Well, um, looking at an example of Ormalu's approach, how do you feel about um, the formatted code that is displayed here? Yeah, their uh, their example I I think is uh, is pretty good. It seems like a pretty sane decision. They're not doing anything too complicated. Just uh, going by line line width. It looks like. And I, I am concerned about the uh, possible exponential blowups they talk about when formatting deeply nested expressions. Uh, on the one hand, that shouldn't happen too often. Right. But it would be pretty annoying for your mm -hmm. uh, your formatter to freeze your editor if you're if you're unlucky enough to have a, a synchronous editor like Emacs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Um, so one of the things I'm noticing is that it does look like it looks very similar to how our code is formatted right now using Brittany, um, and I like that. I mean, it's not it's nothing too crazy. I see that, um, I think, later on, or maybe a little bit before, I, might, I may have missed it. Uh, I thought I read that he, um, Ormo, Ormolu, Ormolu uh, is supposed to allow you to, you know, have a little bit of an opinion, but still um, retain, like, a consistent uh, style throughout everything. Um, yes, and actually I see that now. It's a little bit below um, the formatted code uh, example here. But um, but yes, I do, I like how it's not nothing too different and too insane in, uh, from what I'm used to myself. So I'm kind of biased in that regard that I already like uh, what I see because it's similar uh, to what I use every day. Um, how do you feel about that? Feel about the same way? Yeah, I mean, the first thing when I, when I saw this uh, announcement was, you know, why <laughs> why another formatter? Uh, you know, why isn't Brittany good enough? Um, I think that the the simple the simplicity of implementation looks like uh, one reason. Uh, maybe they they think uh, long term it would be easier to use this and uh, use this. Uh, architecture and maintain it and then also maybe that that sort of ease of overriding mm -hmm. things by a new line instead of having a uh, config files yeah and i think it's just trying to get closer to something like go format where uh, not the biggest fan of go but one one great thing from uh, goland is never having to worry about formatting <laughs> and then always being able to read things in the same format yes that is definitely very handy. Continuing on, other features he says that are worth mentioning are formatting already formatted code is a no -op. Yeah, I, I think if, if that wasn't the case, then uh, that, that sort of defeat the whole purpose of uh, having a, a formatter. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it would be consistent. So we got to have that. It says project aims to implement one true formatting style. I think mm -hmm. we just touched on this a little bit. Um, right. 
basically just avoiding the need for a configuration, mm -hmm. you know, lowering that barrier to entry so that everyone can pick it up and use it. Yep. Everybody's using, yes, this uh, styler will um, be on the same page, which will be, which will be very nice. Uh, then it looks like um, they're aiming to <laughs> reduce diff sizes, <laughs> which is right. which is super awesome uh, to us because we have just um, you know uh, single commits just dedicated to running Britney and formatting things accordingly, and then pushing mm -hmm. those up, and then seeing those in Git later. Uh, the right. diffs are just uh, quite large. And it can get it can get a little confusing, um, especially if you're new and you don't know exactly what to look for um, in the beginning. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, maybe we'll uh, have to we'll have to do a test and uh, take one of our old diffs of Britneying something and compare it to Ormolu. I actually uh, like that. Yeah, I think that would be pretty cool. So they use the GHC parser like Britney does, which means that they don't have to worry about uh, incompatibilities is as, as nice as uh, uh, I believe it's uh, GHC DevTools that provides the AST the alternative AST uh, that's easier to use than the GHC API uh, as nice as that is to use you've got to worry about supporting all those language extensions and uh, it's it's more of a headache than it's worth looks like um the code of the actual formatter of itself is written so it's easy to modify and maintain. That'll that'll be really important. Like uh, they, they go on to mention that uh, only parts of the GHC AST abstract syntax tree uh, for anyone that doesn't know it uh, is implemented, but uh, there's there's a lot left. So having something that's easy to extend with uh, when you're trying to have as many different behaviors defined as you'll need for the GHC AST mm -hmm. is really important. Yeah, and I also see the um, final sentence there is saying that the code base is hacking friendly, so that's that's pretty cool too. Yeah, if uh, if we could get the community involved in in something, you know, then they're going to be more likely to use it. Mm -hmm. And if everyone can kind of standardize on one of these, that'll be great. Um, I'm personally undecided, you know, we've been using Brittany and it's been working out pretty well for us. Uh, um, right. Let me see, we, we had a few things missing, I think, uh, like quasi quotes aren't formatted, uh, type class instances were not formatted. I, I think that got added recently, though. I believe you're correct. If not recently, then sometime, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, if, if Ormolu has some sort of challenges implementing those things, uh, or if the development will kind of play out the same. Mm -hmm. Looks like they have a robust testing scheme in place. That means less bugs, which is always good. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, guess the, I guess the pressing question for me is, is this going to let us uh, remove our Brittany config file, for instance? Yeah. Uh, that'd be, I guess, the greatest win in complexity. Mm -hmm. Is is being able to remove that config file, but still be able to preserve uh, a sane style. Um, and of course, as they say right now, this is vaporware, so we we can't see if that's true yet. Yeah, no, I agree, and especially um, only having seen the config file recently for Brittany. Um, you know, if you were uh, trying to use this in the workplace, that you let's say you just got hired for a Haskell job and they use the Brittany config file, and you um, and you just happen to be hired as a noob, uh, it'd be, you know, it'd be pretty nice to not have to worry about that um, down the road, say if you're given um, some project or something that may have required you to tinker with it, which I think right. that tinkering is, is great for, you know, learning and stuff, but maybe not at that point in time, um, mm -hmm. something's needed, right, if, if it's pressing, you know, uh, if there's you know, urgency to the matter or something. Funny, funnily enough, my first job title was actually noob. <laughs> Not really. I just really wanted to make that joke. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like they're saying, you know, that the project is open. It's free to fork. Actively maintains. Those are all pluses. 
Um, looks like Tweeg is maintaining it. Yep. Yeah, and that that gives some confidence too, because they they came out with uh, quite a few really good code bases uh, in the Haskell community, like uh, inline JS, uh, Lori, if anyone's familiar with Nix OS. Um, and uh, I believe they also have uh, uh, Cassandra bindings off somewhere. Uh, so some good code bases coming out there. Yeah, that's actually, yeah, that's, that's pretty good to hear. I'm already all for it. But like you said, and like this article said, it's, uh, it's vaporware, but um, looks pretty cool and it seems exciting if it delivers on you know the features and principles and stuff like that then it could very well be a replacement for us here although we're perfectly happy with Brittany at, at the moment <laughs> it's really mm -hmm. you know i guess one of the uh, every once in a while you know with Brittany, we'll we'll think uh you know a line's too long or something and uh man i wish it would format like this or that mm -hmm. so if it can give us the best of both worlds i think we could we could probably switch, but only time will tell. Thanks for being on the show with me today, Cody. And thank you for listening to the Haskell Weekly Podcast. This has been episode 12. If you liked our show, find out more at our website, haskellweekly.news. Thanks again for listening. I've been your guest, Dustin Seegers. I've been your host, Cody Goodman. And we'll see you again next week. <laughs>